For many riders, having Giro d'Italia stage winner inscribed on their palmares is a dream come true. Behind those wins is always a compelling story, not least the race to the line itself. Over the last seven editions, there have been some eye-catching finales outside of the battle for pink. And now we look back at six memorable wins from the Giro d'Italia. Veteran Dutchman Peter Veining has always had a special eye for an opportunity. Case in point, Stage 9's finish in Sestola back in 2014. Part of the day's breakaway and with a healthy lead over the pack, the Orica Green Edge rider accelerated on the lower slopes. Only Italian Davide Malacarne could follow, setting up a one-on-one -on -one tussle heading into the final kilometre. They're cat mousing with 600 metres to go, and Malakani's having a look over his shoulder. They're going to start weaving over the road before you know it, Dan. Yeah, no one wants to give the other one the slipstream on the wheel and give them the advantage in this sprint. I still give Malakani the edge over Peter Vini, but they're almost coming to a standstill. We see this <laughs> so often in breakaways. I don't think Pozzaviva's got any chance of catching them, but they'll. Uh, the longer they leave it, it still is uh, 500 oh metres to goodness. go, Carlton. We might have a track stand in a moment. Uh, <laughs> six, six, uh, 500 metres to go, uh, 400 before you know it. They're still looking at each other. Nobody wants to offer up any kind of assistance to the other. Um, and uh, I guess feeling the taller of the two from Orica Greenwich here would punch a bigger hole in the air and give Malakani the better ride. Malakani's being forced to stay there at the moment because Feening is refusing to take over. Meanwhile, Pozzavivo just keeps turning it. He's going to get at least four seconds bonus, plus whatever gap he throws up between himself and Cadell Evans, who's part of this group of uh, GC contenders. Meanwhile, the stage victory is up for grabs, and uh, Feening looks like he's winding himself up for an attack, and he's running out of metres to do it. Malakani sits back down, and so does Feening. Yeah, 250 metres, beg your pardon. 250 going. Malakani opens it up pretty early. Is that a sign of nerves? Maybe Peter too early. Is on the wheel. He's coming round. He's gone round to the centre of the road. He's going to take the shortest route through. And Peter Veening, I think, has got this one wrapped up. 25 metres. Oh, another win for Orica Green Edge. Oh, unbelievable stuff. A second Giro stage win in Veening's career. And with rumours of a return to the World Tour at the age of 39, perhaps not the last. While in recent years the Giro has largely spurned the notion of processional final stages, 2015's conclusion into Milan appeared on paper to be just that. However, with a number of tight bends in the finishing circuit, two riders spotted a chance as track specialist Ilio Kessa and time trialling diesel Luke Durbridge slipped away with 30 kilometres to go. Heading into the last lap, the question was, could the pair hold off the charging lead-out trains behind them? We knew that Kaiser would do this. He's a cold, cold killer at moments such as this. Why don't you come this side, says Durbo. He's trying some psycho games with him right now. And while this goes on, uh, the pack are just coming. They're coming. You can see the long shot in a few moments' time. Kaiser checks behind himself. There it is. Kaiser's not interested just yet. 450 metres. They've got to be very careful right now. Where are they going to go for it? Still, they play cat and mouse. Durbo doesn't like it, but Kaiser is playing his own game. in the red skin suit. Still they go, and Durbo goes down now. Durbo hits it. He's on the cobbles. Can Kaiser stay with him? Kaiser suddenly finds him, tries to drift. Oh, and he takes the lead, does he? He's in front. Ilio Kaiser is going to take a stage of the Giro. Oh, that's magnificent. And I got uh, Luke Durbridge as my partner in crime, and uh, we work perfectly together. I've seen a lot from Cavendish, of course, how he does it, and uh, so I had uh, some uh, experience from that and I uh, used it today to win. An exemplary display of teamwork came from Etix Quickstep in Pinerolo in 2016. As Moreno Moser and Gianluca Brambilla headed up the road, behind Matteo Trentin. Heading into the final kilometre, it seemed the stage would come down to the duo. Trentin, though, had other ideas. 
under one kilometer they go and now they will start to play cat and mouse and uh, yeah well might Gianluca Bambila look over his left shoulder to see what's happening on the road behind him because they will be flying to try and close this gap and a kilometer when you start to finesse and think about outwitting your opponent can last an awfully long time well, who's going to be fastest coming into the sprint? That's the question that we're going to have answered in just about 500 metres time. Moser, who started his career winning pretty big bunch sprints, you'd have to favour him, but Bambir is pretty fast in a small group as well. It's going to be down to who's got the freshest legs, I think, in the last 200 metres. And Brambila is sitting tight on the wheel of the bigger Italian, isn't he? He's just waiting to open up his sprint. Moser knows he's there, but Moser appears to be in control. And there is Matteo Trentin, as if from nowhere. What are they going to do about him? And what is Trentin going to do relative to Gianluca Brambilla? It's a fascinating situation here. Has Brambilla just going to sit tight and wait for Trentin to join Though that duo, and if he does, has Trentin got the firepower and the kick you would imagine he might have to get past both his teammate and Malena Moza at the death. Just 200 metres to go now. Moza still on the front. Does he even know Trentin is there? Now he does because Trentin opens up a sprint and Trentin surely is going to take this win. 50 metres to go. Bambilla allowed him to do it. Moza, no chance of responding. What a brilliant from a brilliant rider, Matteo Trentin. By 2017, TJ Van Garderen's potential as a Grand Tour winner seemed to be coming to an end. A collapse on Blockhouse on Stage 9 had critics questioning the BMC rider's abilities. With the GC pressure off, the then 28-year-old spent the rest of the Giro hunting for a stage victory. On a fearsome day on Stage 18, that opportunity came as Van Garderen and Mikel Lander led a hair-raising descent towards the penultimate climb. Despite a group of GC favourites rapidly closing the gap behind, Van Garderen played it cool, taking a crucial inside line on the run into the finish. An emotional win for the American, and one that did a lot to answer the critics. It's been a rough couple of years in Grand Tours as far as the classification is going, but I just, you know, did my best to try to keep the morale high. And, uh, you know, this is my first Grand Tour victory, so it's, uh, it's an incredible feeling. Esteban Chavez had achieved a Giro podium place back in 2016, and two years later looked like a potential winner on the stage to Mount Etna. But the race would go downhill from there, and by the end of the Giro, Chavez was a regular member of the Gruppetto. After diagnosis with the Epstein-Barr virus, the Colombian wouldn't race again for nearly a year. However, by the end of the 2019 Giro, the 29-year-old was just starting to refine his form. Among those in the breakaway on stage 19, and with a series of ferocious attacks, Chavez finally charged away. Back at his best, the trademark smile turned to a roar of relief at the finish line. This showed me I can do it. This showed me um, I'm not over. And this showed me I can do for a long, long time. <laughs> Breakaways at the Giro can often be characterised as games of cat and mouse with the peloton. No greater example than stage 18 last year, where they let escapees Nico Denz, Mirko Maestri and Damiano Cima dangle out at the front until the very last metre. Just craning my neck to see out as the finish line is about to be arrived at by those riders. Inside the final kilometre, 800 metres remaining. Dens on the front, the Italians behind him. It's Maestri that uh, free wheels, and nobody wants to take it up, and they can't afford to do this. They cannot afford to do this. They must ride it all the way, because look at the rate of the sprint behind as they wind up. Rubama FT Shea, they're going for a dance around the road, and they can't do it. They want to time it to absolute perfection. But they're inside the final 500 metres now, and now it's the launch. Dens goes for glory. Can Maestri stay with him? Chima in his way. He tries to get the gap. Maestri is fighting to stay in the wheel. Maestri is there waiting to launch. Dens it is. He goes for the long one. He's fired first. Maestri goes. Chima on the opposite side of the road. They're going to be 
swamp as uh, Damar comes from behind. Damar launches. Ackerman on the left. And it looks like they're going to be caught in the run to the line, or are they? Jima has the gap. Jima to the line. Danny Anachima! Oh, he's just about hangs on. Danny Anachima gets the victory. Frustration for the sprinters, delight for Chima, and another memorable day at the Giro d'Italia.